Can a DLC win Game of the Year? Ghost of Ticonderoga just released their Director's Cut DLC on PS4 and PS5. Since this is one of my favorite games of all time, I couldn't wait until it released so I could play some new content. Wait, what? Kaze! No, no bro, we ain't going there. I haven't even finished the intro and you're gonna drop this on me? I still haven't even gotten over my first horse. Now we got this? Nope, nope, put up the black screen, this didn't happen. When I come back to the story later, you better be alive. That's all I'm saying, otherwise, there will be consequences. What will you learn? That your actions have consequences! Let's first talk about what is included in the director's cut and the main differences between the PS4 and PS5 versions. The PS4 upgrade will cost you $20 USD or $60 if you don't already own the base game and it includes the Iki Island expansion. Here you'll have a brand new island to explore with additional story and side quest content. A PS5 upgrade will run you $30 but comes with a bunch of exclusive features like Japanese lip sync, haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, 3D audio, reduced load times, and dynamic 4K 60fps. You might be wondering why none of these features are available on the PS4, and I'll tell ya, it's just the PS5's built different. Like, literally. It's newer and has way better hardware. Let's use the Japanese lip sync as an example. This was probably the feature people most wanted to be on the PS4 version as well. Even I originally planned to play the game in Japanese, but as soon as I saw the mouth folds weren't lining up, I switched that shit back to English ASAP. Which, side note, really is not a bad thing, because the English voice acting in this game is top fucking tier. Shout out Dice Kate Suji, absolute gem. On the PS4, all the cutscenes had to be pre-rendered, causing them to be very, very large. Logistically, Sucker Punch didn't have the time or disk space to also include the Japanese versions of these. But the PS5's SSD allows for real-time rendering, meaning that all of the cutscenes that had to be pre-rendered on the original game can now be done live, and that's how they're able to accommodate the extra lip sync. The same goes for the rest of the features. The adaptive triggers and haptic feedback are made possible through the PS5's DualSense controller, while the audio, frame rate, and load times are obviously going to be improved with newer and better hardware. With all that said, it's not like the PS4 version sucks ass. My first playthrough was on PS4, and I can safely say that it looks and performs better than 90% of the PC games on the market. Even up until this day, I have never encountered a bug in this game. Not a single one. And if you ever want to upgrade to the PS5 Director's Cut from the PS4 one in the future, you'll just have to pay the $10 difference. Now back to the topic on hand. What the fuck? What did you do to my horse? How did we manage to get here? Oh, the agony. Well, I'll tell you how it happened. We're posted up on Tsushima after catching a massive dub from that Kothun Khan guy. We come across a little village by the shore with some people having a bad trip. We investigate to see that it was actually the Mongols and not shrooms. We're ambushed, but this time they have their own cheering section in the form of shamans. Now, I'm a sucker for some Mongolian throat singing, so it felt pretty bad to have to go and kill this guy first. We win the battle and interrogate one of the dying Mongols who tells us their entire plan because sure. Turns out they are part of the Eagle Tribe and plan on attacking Tsushima after gaining control of Iki Island. It'd be kinda inconvenient for another Mongol invasion this soon. Maybe in like seven years or something, but not this early. So we decide to depart to Iki Island where quick side note, they hate samurai, but we'll get to that later. Boat ride's going pretty well, until it decides not to. Now I know horses are pretty good in water, but I wouldn't put my money on one in the middle of an ocean during a storm. But turns out I should've, cause our horse is an absolute fucking unit. Not only did he manage to get to shore, but he's already out here blasting Mongols. Suck on that, sea biscuit. After reuniting with my horse, I decided to explore some of the island and see what it had to offer. In the midst of one of my quests, uh, I died. Not because I'm bad, but purely for research purposes. Turns out dying was part of the story, so that's what we call progression. I like it, Kaji. I get captured and transported to the eagle, who, to my surprise, was not an actual eagle. After my immersion was ruined, she fed me some of her sacred medicine, but it was probably just some Campbell's chicken noodle. This stuff is apparently making people go crazy, and after drinking it, I will now face the judgment of my ancestors. But mainly, it's the judgment of not saving our father before he was killed. Throughout the campaign, we hear the eagle's voice in our head attempting to drive us into madness, and she's really saying some heinous shit out there. Ugh. Next time, full father. And your suffering. But little does she know I've been hearing voices in my head since 2007, so this doesn't have an effect on me. As we progress, we get to learn memories of Jin's past, mostly about his experiences with his mother and father. Turns out the main reason the people of Iki don't like samurai is because Jin's father went in and massacred them. Bit of an overreaction, right? The more and more we learn about Jin's father, we start to realize that, yeah, he's just a piece of shit. I'm sorry I failed you, father. Not me. Our clan. Sakai name is tarnished. 
We lend a helping hand to the people of Iki to prove we aren't like our father and eventually are able to forgive ourselves for that day and we stop hearing the eagle's voice. The story itself in the DLC is pretty decent. We get a lot of backstory on Jin, the memory flashbacks are pretty cool. However, the eagle and her tribe are pretty useless. The whole point of the medicine was to eventually have us accept her voices and become one of her shamans. Well, instead, we just don't accept it and beat her ass in the end. The whole shaman thing wasn't explored that much. They were just treated as another enemy variant and the eagle herself was a pretty forgetful character. The internal struggle that Jin faces about his father's death was way more impactful than the Mongols themselves. Even after the final fight against the Eagle, it's the decision Jin makes after that matters, not the fight itself. I also wondered, what if you don't die during this DLC? Do you just never meet the Eagle? You just are off there chilling on Iki Island, clearing out the Mongols? I've got no idea. If anyone can tell me in the comments, that would be very helpful. Overall, you have nine story missions that will take you just a couple of hours to complete. They are fun, but not the main draw to the DLC. Do you know what is? That's right. Monkeys! We've got wild monkeys, friendly monkeys, angry monkey, monkey armor. The monkey chain! The monkey's fist! There's so much monkey, it might as well be called the Monkey Key Island expansion. <laughs> Cause like... This vibe joke is... Yeah, I fucking get it, man. With the director's cut, you'll experience all the great gameplay and features from the main game and some fun new additions. You can find bamboo strikes, haikus, shrines, and pillars of honor. There's also enhanced hot springs, but what makes them enhanced? Yeah, that's right, fucking spa monkeys. We also get two additional guiding wins. There's archery challenges that are set up to have you shoot lanterns as fast as possible, while the animal sanctuaries have you play the flute to gain the trust of different animals. The animal sanctuaries were some of my favorite content in the director's cut. We get to play some very pleasant flute songs and make good use of the DualSense's motion controls and also learn some backstory about Jin and his mom. We've got a couple cool side quests that help with character development for some of the Iki Island cast, and even one featuring everyone's favorite sake salesman. So you're the most hated man on Iki. Half the island wants you dead, the other half you owe money. Am I close? Lucky guess. Mythic Tales also make a return, and although we only get two, they're probably my favorite missions in the entire expansion. And of course, with the director's cut comes a variety of new cosmetics to unlock varying from super drippy to super cursed. We even get some cool puzzles that allow us to unlock the Bloodborne, God of War, and Shadow of Colossus armors from the Legends mode. As for new gameplay mechanics, there's only four that I noticed, but they fit in seamlessly with the already existing concepts. We have the Horse Charge, which allows us to stun and sometimes kill Mongols in exchange for our resolve. It's probably the best use of haptic feedback in the game to show our increase of speed. There's also the Grapple Hook Wall Break Down Pull path create thing. Basically, it helps us progress our path while climbing and is the biggest use of tension with the adaptive triggers. The third thing isn't really a new gameplay mechanic, but the monkey armor we receive has special properties of only being able to perform perfect parries and dodges. When you do perform them, there are some really cool new attack animations. And the final one is the Hidden Cove Tournament. We're put here in arena style matches with wooden swords where the first person to land five strikes is ultimately the victor. We're matched up against a bunch of different people with different styles and it just goes to show you, you don't need to murder someone to have fun. And the last thing I wanted to talk about is the art and music. It's no surprise that this game is fucking beautiful. I'm sure you've seen all over the internet people showing off the game or playing around in the photo mode. And I was curious to see if they could keep up that level of artistic detail on Iki Island. And no fucking surprise, they most certainly did. It honestly looks just as good Good, if not better than Tsushima. I can think of three places specifically that are honestly breathtaking. We have Senjo Gorge with the Wisteria Flowers, the Glowing Water by Thunderhead Cliffs, and the final battle at the coastline with the single Sakura tree in the background. There's also a lot more of that mythic folk look, it's probably the worst way to describe it, that we see a lot of in the Legends mode. And the music. Whew, whew. I could go on for a while explaining how good it is, but let's just let's just listen for a little bit. Hmm, it worked.
that's pretty much what you can expect from the Ghost of Toblerone Director's Cut. There's nothing super groundbreaking or risky done in the DLC, but it's just as engaging as the main game and keeps the user interested throughout. Overall, I've spent about 10 to 12 hours playing and exploring Iki Island. But there's even more content that I've yet to experience. I still plan on doing a playthrough in Japanese with the lip sync, and I even even mentioned that we're supposed to be getting a free update to the Legends mode on September 3rd, which uh, should be today. So if you're on the fence about getting the director's cut, I honestly say go for it. And if you haven't gotten the base game, you just need to do that right now. It's honestly one of the best games I've ever played. And I know not everyone has access to a PlayStation, but if you ever do get a chance, maybe go to a friend's, definitely try to give it a shot. It is so much fun and you'll be wanting to come back for more. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like on it, comment, also hit that bell notification because you know, changing the content, the algorithm's not exactly being my friend. And as always, gotta give a shout out to the people over on the Patreon. If you wanna support me further than just watching the videos, you can go over there. A bunch of different tiers with different rewards. You can get cool things like early access to videos, being able to to vote on future video ideas, picking the games that I stream, and even having your name at the end of videos like these wonderful people. And if you've gotten a chance to play the Director's Cut, make sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. Hope to see you here next time.